Hello, my name is Eileen Cullen. I'm the Extension Field Crop and Forage Crop Entomologist with UW Extension and UW Madison Entomology Department. And today we're just going to spend a few minutes talking about true armyworm in corn. And I'll also make a couple of comments about armyworm in, in wheat and small grains. Um, a couple things to know about true armyworm before we look at the damage and the actual insect and management. Um, are that the true armyworm overwinter primarily south of Wisconsin, south in the, in the United States, and the moths will fly into Wisconsin. So we do tend to catch true armyworm moths in black light trap catches, and that can give us an indication of when we have heavy flights and that moths might be coming in and could present a challenge in corn and soy, uh, small grains. Just to remind you what true armyworm moths, the females, are looking for in terms of optimal egg laying habitat. They like grassy areas, they like to lay their eggs on grass, small grains, thus the wheat, sometimes you see this in rye for seed or oats. Um, another case that's very common is corn following rye. That's the field that we're in today. And this is a situation where you'll often find armyworm in years that we have moth flights and armyworm presence. They'll lay their eggs on the rye. Um, the eggs in the small larvae that were, you know, present on the grass will then move onto the crop, in this case corn. So that's the habitat that we're in today and we're going to show you some of the damage, the percentage of damage, how we work with thresholds, and management in ID. We're looking today first generation larvae on a, about a V7 corn plant, but you can also see this typically in the month of June on smaller plants, uh, you know, V4 and, and smaller in, at that growth stage. So now that you know the crop stage and that we're looking at first generation, this, this larva that we'll see in the damage resulted from the moths, the first moth flight. Um, the true armyworm feeding is typically described what we call as sort of a, a ragging. They'll kind of chew in. They go from the outer part of the leaf margin that you're seeing here. It's very classic. Um, here right in the whorl. We're out here during the day and the, you'll see in a moment that the armyworm larvae like to go in the whorl there for protection. We'll see them there, they've been feeding. When the feeding is really advanced, um, and many people have seen this, especially, well, first generation and second generation armyworm, even when the plants are much taller, you can just be left with little stalks, little midribs, after the armyworm has really fed back on this plant material. So this sample here shows you just how that's starting to progress. So you've got, you're coming into the field, you definitely know this is not a European corn borer feeding, it's too early for western bean cutworm, which is an ear pest. You're looking at this ragging, um, so we're thinking armyworm. Then we've got the frass here on the, on the leaf surface. Definitely the feeding's going on. So the next thing we do in the scouting process and determining thresholds, we look at the damage, and then we look for a live larva on the plant. And then we're going to look at the size of that larva, because that's going to determine how much longer it'll be feeding. Okay, so I'm just going to pop out the whorl here. I can actually see the larva. Before I do that, I'll just kind of show it to you. It's right, the head capsule is starting to move a little bit there. It's right in the whorl. And so what we want to do now is pop the whorl out. Um, in some cases, you'll have a damaged plant and you may not find a larva. In this case, we actually have a live larva on the plant. So I'm slowly just pulling back the whorl so that I can see the larva. Now this is a fairly advanced instar. It's getting near to about, about it's over three quarter of an inch long. It's, I would say, about an inch long. There's a very good shot. It's a, you can see the stripe running on the side of the body and the brown coloration. Um, it's relatively hairless as you compare it to something like corn earworm later in the season that has a more hairy body surface or European corn borer, which has uh, some little spiracle, you know, little uh, little spots on it, um, has a more clear, translucent look. This is a very distinctive uh, armyworm. It can be a brown color, can also take on sort of a green color. A lot of times, as I mentioned, when the small grasses are, are controlled with herbicide or if small grains are cut, the armyworms will move and they'll look for another host plant to feed on. You can see it moving on a corn leaf here. Um, the larvae can get quite large as they go on in their uh, later instar life and then they can move, uh, literally be kind of moving across a road. So as you're scouting for true armyworm larvae in the field, you want to keep in mind that you should scout your BT corn hybrids as well as your conventional hybrids because um, none of the BT hybrids have uh, true armyworm in the range of 
lepidopter or caterpillars that are controlled or suppressed. So all the cornfields would need to be scouted when you have heavy trap captures that you're hearing about of uh, true armyworm moth flights, and especially in areas where you have corn following rye or a grass um, herbicide burn down that you know can then move, and especially if that's a little bit later in the season and then that, that could move the armyworm larvae into corn. So you want to scout all your corn fields. In terms of economic thresholds, we're looking at the percentage of plants in a field. The thresholds for true armyworm larvae are as follows. They're 25 percent of the plants in the field uh, with two or more live larvae on a plant. The threshold is also, and it's this is the kind of range of thresholds, 75% of the plants in the field with one larva on the plant. So you can see that smaller percentage of infestation with more larva, or that larger area of the field, 75% with fewer, with one larva. So that's your, your rule of thumb, your, your treatment decisions. And you'd also want to look at the size of the larvae on those plants. So just keep in mind that three quarter inch or smaller in terms of the length of the true armyworm larva, tells you that there's still quite a bit of feeding that they'll be doing. And so economic treatment thresholds, economic threshold levels at that size are, 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 uh, are recommended. When you get to three quarter inch or an inch long under very heavy populations of true armyworm, you know, sometimes that's a little bit of a gray area um, and treatment may still be economical, but certainly when you get to one inch larvae, to one and a half inch larvae, really keep in mind that they are nearing the end of their larval stage and they're going to pupate and their feeding will be done. So you really want to pay attention to just those things, the percentage of the plants in the field, the number of live larvae, and the length of that larva to really fine tune your treatment. Keep in mind that uh, true armyworm is also a pest in small grains uh, such as winter wheat, it can be in oats, um, or rye for seed, for example, but um, in wheat, for example, and we use this threshold for other small grains, you're looking at a threshold of three armyworm larvae per square foot. And another thing that you should look for in your small grain scouting is looking for lodged areas in the field, lodged wheat plants, for example. Sometimes that's an indication that you may have armyworm present as well. So that scouting is a little different, obviously moving uh, back the stems and looking on the ground. Um, what true armyworm will do in the small grains, they can do leaf feeding that's similar to what you saw today in corn, ragging the plant from the outside of the leaf margin inward. As the wheat heads mature, our, true armyworms can clip heads of wheat. They don't always do this, but they can do that. So that's another thing that you want to look for in, in small grains. So to summarize the true armyworm uh, visit here in the field today, some of the things to keep in mind are the environment that the true armyworm moths like to lay eggs in, the corn following rye is an example, any kind of grass, weed or other grass, small grain that would attract a uh, true armyworm. And then to, in your scouting procedure, which we explained, looking at the percentage of plants with uh, true armyworm, feeding and damage, and then the number of larvae per, per plant infested. Once you do that, you're able to then look at those larvae and look at the size of the larvae, the length, and how much longer they'll be feeding and where you are in that larval life stage to determine if the treatment, a treatment will be recommended and economical. And you can refer to UW Extension Publication A3646, Pest Management uh, in Wisconsin Field Crops. And we have all of this information and more on the True Armyworm Integrated Pest Management and Treatment Options.